there, folks. I'm Brad Gage, and welcome back to Sideshow New York Con Live. I'm here with Guy Clender, and we are going to be wrapping up the last day the of last the day. con. I can't believe it. It's yeah. whoosh. It's Just flew it's by. done so fast. Flew yeah. by, yeah. And so we, uh, we have a lot to show you. And again, if you have any questions, please light us up in the chat. We are going live right now on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Periscope, that is. So let us know if you have any questions, anything you want to see, anything for us. Uh, we're letting it all out on the field here in our last portion of Sideshow New York Con. So first up, let's take a little look at Island Girl here. This is a reveal today, uh, uh, Chris Sanders' piece yeah. that, uh, that he designed, and it was sculpted by Sideshow. And, uh, and this is, yeah, we were looking at this morning, but uh, uh, Guy, do you have any thoughts it's, on this? It's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous piece. First, what, what pops to me, number one, is the, is the bright big eyes. Um, you know, that's always, that's always a neat thing. But um, the paint scheme. I know that uh, the sculptor said that, that uh, one of the hardest things to do was, was to get that flower lay mm -hmm. uh, correct. And when you see it, how they painted it and how they've textured it, down into the sand, I had to take a look to see that that wasn't, um, you know, actual sand right. that was put on there. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, it's, you know, one of those statues of the sand. And it's not that it's done with the paint, that the water actually has that, that wet look and kind of the fun uh, motion of it with the, uh, with the octopus and the splashing water out of the, uh, the uh, tiki mug. Um, I really like it. The, the multiple colors that are done in the, uh, in the hair, it just has a lot of, a lot of life to it. Yeah, and, and it evokes, you know, the films of Chris Andrews that we've seen. Yes. Of course, Lilo and Stitch, How to Train Your Dragon, co-director of those films. And so, you know, it's cool to me to have this yeah. feature film director of these classics yes. making stuff uh, with Sideshow. Yeah, it is really cool. Yeah. It is really cool to bring those designs uh, to life in 3D. And so this is getting us started here, folks, but we have a bunch more for you. We're going to have some, some videos on our playlist. We're going to have a, a new episode of uh, Strike a Pose. Uh, and we are going to be showing off some reveals that we only revealed this morning, but if yes. you haven't seen it yet, yeah, if we'll you re If you didn't wake up early, um, you're going to get a chance now. <laughs> Good for you also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good for sleeping in. So, I mean, this is the last day of the con, Guy. Uh, uh, what's been your favorite piece? Oh, um, you know, there's been so many. It, it could be across uh, the realm of it. Um, in the in the one one scale stuff, I'm I'm loving uh, the child. Yes. The child is spectacular. Um, Hot Toys introducing us to the Clone Wars stuff, mm -hmm. um, and to see those in person. Uh, you know, we were able to get a few photographs of them uh, as a first kind of a tease, right. but to now actually see them uh, has been spectacular. These realistic versions yeah. of these cartoon um, characters. Uh, some of the larger statues, uh, that Venom is insane. just, yeah, insane. The but big just, stuff is really what yeah, I like. Yeah, yeah, those things are, are amazing to me uh, from, the, from the paint, the design, the movement uh, that they create in those is, is spectacular. So there's probably one thing in every one of the realms, and even some of the stuff that they've shown, uh, you know, that some of the jewelry and things like that, mm -hmm. some of the stuff in the Atomic Misfits uh, stuff that uh, I think is spectacular. It's, so. we, we really cover all of our bases here at Sideshow New York Con, and I guess the other question is, what are you looking forward to talking about today? Uh, you know, it just arrived, and I have not physically seen it yet. Uh, you did this morning, uh, is uh, the Venomize yes. stuff. I have, have not seen venomized, what this looks like. Yes, figures, um, yeah. I saw you this morning talk about it, and so uh, for me to walk in there in a little bit and check it out, I'm very excited. Me too. Very excited to check that out. And also, uh, we have, we're going to see a little bit later, uh, uh, a Superman premium format, but uh, we actually have a video of our call to action Superman premium format uh, that was in our diorama here yesterday. And so I'll toss to that, but be sure to. Hang right in your seat because me and Guy are going to be looking at the booth one last time, giving you the walk around and a tour. And remember that everything you see here, you can check out and reserve for yourself or buy online at side.show slash con. All right, here's a little video for you, and we'll be back in a moment. Hey, Paulie! Hey, Guy. You're waiting in line for the con again, aren't you? Hey, New York City, here I come! Guy, it's a virtual con. I mean, yeah, we're building a booth, but we're not actually going to New York. I got every faith in Sideshow. Sideshow said, Sideshow New York Con, and I expect to get the New York City experience. New York? Well, in that case, out of my way, I'm walking here, huh? Oh, I love that New York energy, don't you? 
Hi guys, it's Tim Hansen. I'm gonna walk you through the process of putting some clothes on this Superman premium format figure. Let's get started. The first part of this process, of course, we're gonna actually reference some 2D art. Uh, so we can kind of see the direction we're going in, kind of examine the layers he's gonna be wearing. We're gonna do a shirt, pants, a suit jacket, and a tie as well. I'm gonna start off by just kind of drawing on here. I draw on the resins all the time. I'm gonna find his shoulder line where I want the shirt to lay. Since both of them are pulled back and he really has this cool action of revealing the logo, then I wanna take that center line here and then do the same thing on the back. I'm gonna start at the center back here. In my initial patterning phase, I am basically trying for the best mock-up that I can. So here's the back side of the shirt. The sleeve is gonna connect uh, at the shoulder, and then we're gonna wrap it around right down here. Generally, when I'm patterning, I like to accommodate for both the seam allowance and if something has to interact with the physical sculpt. I tend to keep things long. You can see right there from the top, I'm looking at about four and five eighths of an inch. I'm basically making a body block right now. And that's kind of like the process for all of these because every sculpt is so unique. Uh, each one of these ends up being kind of a puzzle piece to figure out. Two and a quarter. I need to basically take that shirt pattern and I'm gonna turn it along with his body. And here I'm gonna do basically a somewhat generic curve, just looking at how the form is here from this angle. You can see that it makes a backwards C, if you will. So I know that's gonna have to curve to accommodate back around that arm. That's pretty much three inches. I'm not going super, super crazy specific. You do about one and seven eighths from that point. Now, this is kind of a cool thing uh, that's part of my process as well. As you can see on the pattern right now, this measurement right here, this is where his waist is at his left side. And if we look at where the center back line is, where the break of the sculpt is, it's at a completely different height. Because his torso is pulling, this shape then becomes a curve. Okay, so that's pretty much the left back of the shirt. I'm gonna do the same steps for the right side, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of accommodating because of the way his body is turned. I'm gonna drop this measurement straight down for right now. I wanna take that center back point and I wanna measure it to the right side of where the shirt's gonna land on his body. That's a wacky looking pattern. In my industry, this is a very normal looking pattern. The beauty of this is that once this is all done, it's gonna look like he's a guy running and he's wearing a shirt. At this point, I'm gonna go through and add seam allowances and a little bit of the hem to the bottom. I usually do about 3 16 of an inch. Another thing while I'm looking at this, I wanna basically work in some additional fabric in there to accommodate for wrinkles or because he's pulling, we're gonna get some tension. So I want some tension lines. I don't want this to be an exact form-fitting uh, garment. Okay, so this is gonna be my shirt back and that's pretty much my pattern for that. Now, we're doing the front of the shirt and unlike the back of the shirt, the fronts have to be pulled open and interacting with his hands. I'm actually gonna run my tape to his fingers, kind of like this here. I'm gonna make that about eight inches long. So now I'm gonna actually flip my back pattern on here. Left side back, left side front. I'm gonna start just putting a line here for the shoulder. I wanna keep it the same size, same width as this one. About one and a quarter inches here. So I have to determine the depth, of course, as to where that armhole's gonna be. So normally for that, I just, I wrap my tape across the front here there and then come where a shirt would naturally close right here five eighths of an inch down so here we are at this armpit point and i'm going to bring it right down to the waist here
I'm going to go through and add, again, same process. I'm going to add my 316 seam allowance uh, all around this pattern. I want to make sure I'm giving myself enough room to do something called a double fold hem. If you look at the bottom of most shirts, basically fold it over once and then again to give you a nice clean edge on the bottom. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room, but I also want to keep it in scale. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my back and then kind of line it up with where I'm going to sew it together with my front just to make sure that my lines are lining up and that it'll stitch well together. Okay, so basically this is what I wanted to do right here. I'm looking at the overall arcing shape of these two together, which is really important. Feels pretty cool right there. Let's see my I'm going to take out this line, make sure everything's running in conjunction with each other here my shirt left front. Okay, now I'm gonna take the same process, I'm gonna repeat it for the right side. We've seen patterning for the shirt front, the shirt back as well, so how about that sleeve? Oftentimes, sleeves can be different fronts and backs. Uh, if I can, uh, just for the ease of patterning and uh, for production sake, I do try to make the pattern, the fronts and backs the same. Okay, and then because I'm mirroring this pattern, I'm just gonna lightly cut along that center line. So it'll be easier just to fold over and cut the rest of it that way. Okay, and there you have it. My mock-up sleeve right there. I've actually gone through a few iterations now of the shirt, doing some fine tuning and some adjustments here and there, but I wanted to show you a little bit, at least on paper, of the process that I'm going through as I'm patterning for these things. Uh, here we have the right fronts of the shirt, for example. So in accommodating for how a shirt is supposed to work, I realized that because he has to be grabbing it, I actually have to add a curve I'm gonna dress this one so you guys can see kind of where I'm at right now and then how I'm gonna evolve onto the final stage. We want these things to mimic, you know, real life uh, in a lot of ways if possible. When I initially did my first measurements my patterning, I didn't accommodate for the extra material that's in his upper back. So I went through and then I wanted to add some back behind the collar because, you know, if you could imagine he's pulling back this much, that shirt's gonna be wrinkling back there. The next one, I'm gonna alter this line just a little bit where the collar's going, and then I'm gonna change the length on some of these at the bottom. With that being said, these are my final patterns for my shirt. There's the sleeve here, and this is the collar with the collar stand attached to it. I'm gonna lay them out on my fabric I've selected for the shirt and um, cut them out. Normally we make uh, at least two prototypes of a figure, so I'll basically be cutting out two sets at one time. Cool. Okay, so I've cut out my final pattern pieces. Uh, now I just wanted to go through and show you basically uh, how I'm gonna sew them together. These will meet up on the shoulders here, as will these, and then this seam and this seam will connect, which is actually the side of the shirt. This sleeve piece will go right there, same on either side. So our next step is uh, sewing these pieces together. And I'm gonna start by sewing the seams at the shoulders here. Classic old sewing term is right sides together. So this is the wrong side or the inside of the fabric. And there you have our shoulder seam right there. I'm gonna do the same thing for the left side here. So there we go, both shoulders are now together. Right now I'm gonna go press these so they're flat and then I'm gonna do a quick top stitch along that shoulder edge to make sure the seam stays flat. All right, so the next thing I actually wanna do is put these sleeves on. So that sleeve looks great. I'm actually gonna repeat the process for the right side sleeve. That same top stitch that I did to the shoulder seam, I'm gonna do also to the armhole seam. And it's definitely beginning to look like a shirt. The next thing I wanna do is add two rectangular plackets. And then over that, I'm gonna put the collar, which goes all around the neck hole up here at the top. And then my final step is gonna be basically sewing up the sleeves and the sides of the shirt. That'll make for a complete sewn shirt. 
One last thing I wanna do before I actually put this shirt uh, onto the resin body is I'm gonna run some wire just right up this channel that I made right here. Now it has the ability to pose any way you want it. Gonna remove the arms. It's gonna be dressed one arm at a time. The right side is still gonna be tucked into the pants here. So I'm gonna create some tension by separating him down. As an example, this is, uh, this is pretty much how it's gonna look. All right, so the shirt's done. I'm now gonna repeat this process for the pants and the suit jacket and the tie. Make some more patterns, do more mock-ups. And by the end of this, we should have a pretty killer looking prototype. And there we have it. Our Superman premium format figure is now fully clothed. And wow, what a project that was. It was challenging, it was a lot of fun. I'm ecstatic with how it turned out. Hey there, welcome to another Sideshow unboxing. Today we've got a Logan premium format figure by Sideshow. Let's get started. First up is the base. There we are. I'll just rotate that towards you. And the other part of the base is this broken bar stool. And this has a keyhole that fits the key right here. Next up, let's put his main body in. Okay. So for the main part of the body, his right foot has a key that goes into this keyhole and his left foot is magnetized to this part of the bar stool. So the key goes in first with the right foot like so. Get the right angle. There you are. And the pants are actually made out of fabric so you can style them however you'd like. Next up is the collector's portrait. Now before you put the portrait on, there are his dog tags right here. Now the dog tags and these broken pieces of glass will be coming in a plastic bag in the box. You're gonna to wanna to put the dog tags on first before you put on the portrait. Like so. And actually, so the dog tags can hang however you'd like, but it does have a magnet fit right there on his chest. So next we'll just do the left arm. And that fits into the key. Like so. And then the right arm, which fits into this key. that. And the finishing touch is the broken glass that I talked about before. So these can go anywhere on the base you'd like. I'll put the main broken glass there, but they are all just pieces of glass shard. And there you go, the collector's edition Logan premium format figure by Sideshow. But that's not all, we also have an exclusive portrait for Logan. So let me take this off and replace it. Okay, and we will replace that one with the battle damaged exclusive portrait right there. Voila, there is the exclusive edition Logan premium format figure by Sideshow. Well, this has been another Sideshow unboxing. Thanks so much for being with us and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Kat Sabena and I'm a painter at Sideshow. I am Will Harbottle, I'm a sculptor at Sideshow. Welcome to SideshowCon. Welcome.
Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Sideshow New York Con. I'm Brad Gage, and we are here in the booth celebrating our last moment. I'm basking in the booth here as we have our last few parts of the show here uh, at the con. I'm getting a little nostalgic, but we have a lot to show you. Uh, some new reveals that we had this morning. If you haven't seen them yet, we're going to have those for you. And we might just have a way to show you a little bit of that Superman you were just watching uh, in the video. But uh, but I do want to toss the camera over to Guy Clender in the corner because uh, uh, he uh, ran over some people to get a look at our new reveals here uh, uh, of the Venomized figures. The, this stuff is just wild. Yeah. Right? Just wild. Um, this is so fun. I know. Uh, and now normally, a, and that's a one to one. Figure. Yes. That's normally, a, people yes. know me as getting into the six scale, but the one to one is fun. Um, Life size. Yeah. Figure. Yeah. Um, and the camera's catching it with the light there. That it almost has that uh, that mica style where it gets the it gets the purples and the blacks and mm -hmm. the grays depending on how the light hits it. Um, I love the movement, like right up over the the leg there, as it kind of does its its splash. The, the waves it's, of it's the making hair. It's its way, uh, yeah, taking and over making the its body. Way. And this one here will have swap out parts. So this is this is in that cute half transformation. But uh, I believe we're going to get a, a uh, swap out portrait. Yes, I, I, I Which I is always something I dig portrait, on. A full venomized um, Groot. And again, yeah, the, these are Hot Toys. I don't know if we've mentioned that before, but these are Hot Toys figures. Um, not available yet, right, guy? But Correct. They, yes. Yes. This is a this is an early sample that we have here. Um, but what's neat is that this is going to be uh, articulated, and uh, it's one one. It's poseable. It's cute and scary. Um, so, which is great. I I like yourself. Uh, I uh, really love the little uh, his friends. His little friends there, uh, which I believe will also be uh, able to be moved around as well. Um, even on the back, I'm going to move out to the camera again, that uh, it has that wave and movement. On. Well, it, it, yeah, and, and it's interesting, too. I mean, like, I've never seen, I, I've never seen Groot with these, these baby Venus fly traps going on. So that's a new look for me as well. I don't know <laughs> if that just comes out when he's uh, being possessed. Yeah, but um, he doesn't seem negatively phased by it. Um, it this, well, uh, we know Groot even youthful, was a little mischievous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of fun. Now, this Iron Man Venomized, though. Yes. Wow. Okay, number one, just the sheer size of it. This is massive. Yeah. Massive as far as the size. Um, and the, the look and the idea behind that, I mean, the serpentine tongue uh, coming out there and the detail and sculpt in that. And then just how uh, Venom's uh, symbiote is working over and around and getting in and out yes. side of the armor. You can see it kind of uh, going inside the armor and, and just wiggling its way in and around, which is great. This spider leg thing coming out. I mean, is is so it's wild. It's gruesome. It's 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 Cronenberg esque. It's <laughs> Ex yeah, yeah, you're right. Very yeah. body horror in the way that Venom does. It evokes that. I mean, yeah, this is definitely something. That yeah, where I he, was not expecting. He takes something something over in 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 such a way. Um, I'm really excited uh, to one day get to to see this one and how he'll move and what he'll be able to do. And you know, he's going to have the light up feature. Now, of course, the Venom has you know taken over half of the head, so we'll probably just have the, the one that'll, that'll light, but it'll be interesting to see exactly how does Venom uh, take, over, take over Iron Man. And the, even the base has a neat uh, Venomized down on the, the uh, Iron Man logo there. Yeah, it's interesting what, what Venom can do with any of our favorite characters. I mean, I've, I, believe, I, I was in one of the earliest videos of that uh, Venom pool bust, and, yes. and, then, and then you you go to this and you're like, I would have never thought that Venom would, would you know, combine with something like Iron Man because it's there's machinery there. There's electronics. Yeah, how does and, he do that? Exactly. But, like, clearly the symbiote can. And so clearly he it's, can and it's does. Impressive. Um, so, I mean, you get your cutesy version of it yes. with, the, with the Groot and you get your a little more uh, gruesome and wild and mechanical. Um, and, with the Iron Man, and these uh, are going uh, these are going a pre order tomorrow on oh, Sideshow's nice. website. So, so kind of you know, come by tomorrow, go to Sideshow, 
and uh, Sideshow.com and find these and, and pre-order. Yeah, these are, these are really wild. They are a lot of fun. And we also, we, we have a request to get a little closer look at the Spider-Man uh, armory here. Oh, the armory. This is great. Um, I actually haven't been able to quite see this quite yet either. Quite so I, yeah, yeah. Um, this one here has the six in the addition of the of the Doc Ock arm. Yes. Uh, with this one here, um, uh, you can USB plug that in, which is great. Um, what I think is is fun about it is you get the the ability to have different suits, and it doesn't take up a huge footprint. Right. Uh, in your in your home, uh, and a light up feature that obviously brings a, a lot to them. I like the suits that uh, you can see in a few of them that. Um, He's, he's been beaten up a little bit. It's, it's been a rough day out there in the friendly neighborhood. Now, this is evocative of Iron Man's armory, right? Is that, is that kind of yes. the idea behind it? Yes. Because I've never, I guess I, at least in my experience, and I'm not as well versed in the comics, but I, I haven't known uh, Spider-Man to have an armory like this, similar to a, um, an Iron Man or even a Batman, but... Uh, but it's cool to see it like this because, yeah, you know, there are so many different suits. Uh, yeah. And it's nice to uh, kind of have that connection with all of them. Yeah, to see to see uh, the difference ones. You know, you know, there's the evolution of suits that we see, you know, in Iron Man ones. And this is kind of the different suits of the Spider-Man. Um, I think it's really neat. And, and I, this is kind of a fun. I, I, I love the little out uh, arm there that just gives it a little whimsy uh, as well. That's for, it. it's it's a fun one. Well, some great, there's so many cool things. Some great Hot Toys stuff. Uh, we saw earlier uh, in that video a Superman premium mm. format figure, but uh, uh, let's take a look at another one. Uh, and of course, our our first reveal of this Dark Side maquette. Um, I mean, quite a pair. Yeah. 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 Now, it's, absolutely. It's uh, and and they pack a punch truly together, <laughs> um, both with you know I think Soups's cape. Kind of the uh, yeah the, the shape the, and the flow of that the cape flow is really of, the, of the fabric of the cape um, is is amazing on this and, and it and it brings so much life to it um, you know to say the cape almost has a living quality mm -hmm. uh, to it um, the the pose that he has there were kind of you know stern and and ready to ready to punch he's uh, definitely ready to punch ready to punch there's some it's contemplation kind of, about seems how, like how's this gonna go he definitely seems like he's like hiding his fist a little bit yeah like, how i is, don't know if it, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly how is this gonna play out um the portrait on it is is uh, another great one you have that kind of looking off to the side if you take a peek and you have his eyes here uh, just boom, uh is is another great look uh, with a bit of an upturn on the uh, left side of his lip, there's there's definitely some. All right, this is going to happen. Uh, so, who's ever on the receiving I, I, end of said punch? I got to start looking more at the upturns guy. You're absolutely right. I'm <laughs> pay, and paying more attention to to the the grimace in the mouth area. There is no upturn going on with Dark Side. No. Uh, he's even got. Uh, 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 once we take a look at him, he's even got an underbite going in a way, which is yeah. even yeah. more angry. I yes, think. Yes, actually, yeah. If we do a closer to the, truly, on the side there, it does. Um, and from that, having a good day. Yeah, and from that side, you also see the amazing paint work on his fist. Mm -hmm. um, that it yes. does have that bright, warm, glowing thing. It would it would appear as though it has a light element to it. It's incredible uh, what they can do with paint, uh, creating light. And yeah. It's always uh, we were looking at the Black Canary uh, the other day, the the new Black Canary. Um, premium format and and there was some purple lighting going on and yeah paint and you're like yeah down it's down just by the, incredible down by the base right. is is this a neon sign from a storefront that kind of fell down to the ground and is still going and flickering off the boot and the yeah. and the ground i thought that was incredible it and helps tell the story yeah when when we talk about that 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 paintwork right here along the base and the cracked hall of justice now you see that's almost that warm on fire I mean, it's almost, almost a magma feel. A yeah, bit, like just, molten just lava. he has smashed and destroyed that thing. Um, and he's he's still raring to go. He's <laughs> not quite done. He's not quite done. Uh, and his skin is cracking like stone, too, which was something that uh, Amy Chase had pointed out this morning. But uh, but uh, an aspect of the character I had never really uh, thought about before. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I hadn't either. Yeah. 
this it's it's a beautiful piece. I mean, it is. This is one hulking, hulking dude. They they go great together. <laughs> These figures are are uh, great together. Perhaps that side eye is uh, is meant for this guy. He's just he's just finished with Brainiac. And <laughs> yeah, and oh, set. now another one. <laughs> Well, speaking of moving on, let's uh, let's venture all the way across the booth here to my favorite section that uh, I have not yet been able to look at. And Guy, I'm guessing this is your first time looking at this as well. Yes. So let's let's yes, yes, start yes. over here um, at, at, at what I would say. If you were to ask me what my favorite piece in the booth is today, it's got to be this c classic Boba Fett mythos. The figure. mythos is is really a, a fun line, and I loved when they first introduced this um, with the Vader, uh, Boba, Grimorian. Um, I loved that, uh, um, the, uh, the Obi-Wan, and just this idea of filling in areas of the story that we didn't know, that were possibilities, uh, was great. And now we've done a new Obi-Wan from the Clone Wars. Oh yeah, this is is the, uh, this is also something I, I've I've seen some of these things on the website, but I've not seen the Clone Wars. Of yeah, yeah, that that that's that time, and 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 the smashed droid below him. I love the the flame and smoke coming out of the back uh, end of that as it's all smashed and uh, busted apart. The, the mythos is just such a neat idea that 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 we're getting those stories. And it, it reminds me a lot more of play when you were, mm -hmm. when you were younger and you, whether it be the movies or the comics or the books or whatever it was, and then you had a toy and you, you created your own yes. new little story. You made it your own, yeah. you, you, you added your own, maybe, you know, pieces from another toy to yeah, make it into exactly. something else. And that's, yeah. why th that's why this is, uh, is such a neat one. Um, take a look at the mall. This one here, where you've got the crushed uh, statue of the emperor coming down there. And he's, of course, got his metal legs, so this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is after his bad afternoon <laughs> that he had uh, with Qui-Gon. And, and also uh, and, a, a depiction of him with the, with the horns grown out. Yeah. Which I, it's one of those things that you, I didn't think was possible, but of course anything's possible um, um, in this universe. And it's like, oh, that's, is that how they work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you talked about the Boba Fett as being uh, one of your favorites. And that was one of the, the first of the mythos. What I'm loving, because not only do I love the mythos, obviously we know I love the one sixth as that we've now made them sideshow has now been nice enough to give us these in one the sixth. sixth of Boba and, and the sixth Obi -Wan. of Boba and the yeah. sixth of Obi-Wan. And I can only cross my fingers and hope that we see them continue uh, with the mythos. Um, this figure is fantastic. He also does, the six scale does also have the long rifle uh, and others okay, wires nice. in the cape that allow it to, to really have some movement. And again, for you to create uh, those stories with it. I think it is, you know, Boba Fett with, with the big rifle, I think is, uh, is the pose that probably is, attracted is, a lot of people to it to yes, begin with. Is, is yours. Now where the Obi-Wan, uh, we have him as the statue, but then of course now as the one six is another one that I think is spectacular and really for me draws in a lot of the mythos mm -hmm. and the creating your own stories. You look that on his side, he has both Anakin's and Qui-Gon's saber that he's still carrying with him. This, this tells us a lot about <laughs> what Obi-Wan's life has been, how he's gone through, well, what he's gone through. Uh, the backpack that he's fashioned is some of his Clone Wars armor. Maybe we can see some of that guy. Uh, that we see here, uh, and you can kind of see on the side there. He's got the the macro binocular that we've uh, that we had uh, seen in uh, Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in there. He, um, I love the miniature moisture evaporator. He's got little gaffy sticks. Uh, so he's definitely had to deal with the sand people before. And I love this depiction of a young Alec Guinness. This is, That's a fun one. It's really, uh, again, why these Mythos figures are so much fun and so popular. Yes. Is because they're, they're showing us versions of these characters that we would have never seen before. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a friend who's new to collecting the 1 6th, and he wasn't sure, and he said, okay, that's... That's, the, That's one. the one. That's the one. And and it's fun. He is a huge Star Wars fan. Um, and this is, again, it's part of that story. So I think there's part of that bringing back that child quality of writing your own story and, and creating it. And I think that's the fun part when you actually get these out of the box and, 
and move them around and play with them. There was a lot of years there on Tatooine. Yes. There was a lot of lonely yeah, years. There were a lot of lonely years. <laughs> I don't I don't think there was a big nightlife no. uh, there. And not not a lot of seeing people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so uh, uh, tipping it up a little bit, we're going back uh, to, to look at uh, our Darth Maul again. Um, another version of him, you know, showing off the tats some the, more. The Emperor that we have over here uh, to the right is um, uh, is wonderful. I love that that force lightning coming out of the uh, right hand where he has his saber in the left hand. Um, the the levitation there, just showing off the immense powers uh, that this guy had. So this is showing Darth Sidious um, with the saber, which is interesting. You know, of course, it's like we we don't always think of. Uh, of Sidious as the emperor with a lightsaber. Yeah, with a lightsaber. It's cool to see that, um, and it's and it's uh, the the blade is is kind of you know whatever uh, warped and mangled near the hilt. Yeah, which is a, a very cool aspect of that lightsaber as well. Something I, I don't think I've seen on another lightsaber. Yeah, either. Well, when we talk about the uh, you and I talked about with like the dark side and the others, how, how what they're able to do with the paint. Uh, you get kind of that volcanic planet mm -hmm. look down on the on the base there that almost kind of resembles a, a, an upward hand holding, but that uh, it's yeah, onto the much. leather boots. Mm -hmm. The reflection is onto the leather boots uh, as well. And that to me is uh, is really a neat thing that, that just, uh, again, gives it even more life. And to, to see something like that and you go, no, there's not there's not a light bulb in that. That's not lit up in yep. any way. That's just just what these artists were able to do. Um, that's that's something I've loved about uh, this particular convention is all of the opportunity to see our paint department cut and sew all of that to see the art that goes into the art. Mm -hmm. um, I mean that's that's why people keep coming back to sideshow. I, mean, I, uh, I know yeah, that for a fact. There's a, there's a reason it's it's a. Uh, the big booth that everybody wants to make sure they get to. Before I even worked here, I knew that it's, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, can you tell me a little bit, I don't know too much about Asajj Ventress. And uh, uh, this is a character that, I mean, I... I... She, is, uh, she is definitely a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. um, we got to learn a lot more about her in, in the Clone Wars uh, and, and her involvement uh, with everything that was going on mm -hmm. there. Uh, she was featured in the books uh, and, and uh, things like that. And she just has, uh, if you haven't watched The Clone Wars and you start in the very beginning, that's when she gets introduced really early on. I, um, I, just, had, I just now finished the entire allotment of that. But her story arc that's in it is one of the most interesting. Uh, and I, lo I love that kind of uh, uh, tilted handled lightsaber yes that's and and that she carries two there's, there's not a thing about her that's not a little twisted <laughs> um and that she's she's a, she's really a, a, almost a hired gun uh assassin at times as well and is definitely uh a neat one and this is this is one that has such a fun the the, the, base, the base on yeah. on that what uh, kind of creature? Yeah, exactly. And was she, she responsible for, right, for that exactly. happening? Exactly. I mean, it's already decomposed, so who knows? Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, you know, it could be one of her old it uh, could foes. Be, could be, could be from one of her other ones. And then, and then, just to wrap this up, one of my favorites, the Gamorrean guard. Oh, I was just gonna, one more. Yeah, yeah right here. And we're we spinning him we around. We can't forget about the Gamorrean executioner. Mythos I, I like statue. That. He's yeah. uh, he, he, there's a there's a proud a, a, a stance about him. Uh, it's almost a the grimace and the eyes there of uh, he's pretty proud of who he is and he's there's a self confidence about this guy. Well, you're not getting past. I mean, this is uh, this is the bouncer at any bar. This is yeah. Uh, this if you don't guard. if you don't have a wristband, you're <laughs> not getting past this guy. He's got two of them. So yeah, he's, he's got he's, he's okay. got two. But um, I, I didn't want to skip out on him because, for me, growing up as a big uh, Return of the Jedi fan, it is my favorite. I know. Oh a lot yes. Of people's uh, not favorite, but it is my favorite of all Star Wars, and and I just think. Um, you know, let's have some more. Of the Any, I, anybody from Jabba's Palace, bring them back. I bring them back. I, I bring bring on the guards. <laughs> uh, they were they were a lot of fun. I loved I loved I loved seeing them. Um, now I've been getting into Mandalorian, and so seeing this premium format, 
for the Cargo. first time today is wow. I know this was this is our big reveal. The, yeah, of the, the day for sure. The portrait, that face sculpt, is incredible. Um, this is the actress right here uh, in miniature form. Jay Carano, yeah. Uh, I I I love the symbol on on the cheek. Right, that little tattoo of the uh, rebel uh, lion. Yeah, yes. I I dig that that's on there. Um, obviously, it would have to be on there. But the strands of hair that fall right next to it how they've been able to be done. And the tightness of the braid that wraps around the back left and over and crosses down the right of the back is pretty darn incredible. Then the texture of the chest plate. When you see the intricacy yeah. that went into that. Yeah, it looks like, it, I don't know if that's like kind of, it's not chain mail, it, but, but it's it like, has it's, that. it's like a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, Textile. Yeah, it looks exactly. Like a it, ha it has it has that that almost like you said almost a chainmail. Uh, the weaponry she has the 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 stern determined look. Mm. Um, again, w again, so much life from the eyes and that kind of um, off center uh, look. The tilt to the head um, is spectacular. Her long gun off the side uh, is wonderful, and I just love the big. Canon esque uh, quality of those. Right. I, I was saying uh, earlier, it, it does kind of feel like it's like a Tommy gun rifle, which is something that, you know, you think about Tommy gun 1920s, it's like, oh no, they have those in the galaxy far, far away as well. Yeah. That, that style of. Blaster. Well, that was, that was always the fun part about what they, when, you know, when they did Star Wars and even now is taking original elements and, and, and modifying those in. Um, obviously, we know she's no fan of the Empire. Um, no. And so I love. Every time we've gotten a beat up stormtrooper helmet, yeah, I've really liked that's it. a win. That's, that's a win. That's, that's a win. That's a win for the good team. That one, and that one's got a big old clunk <laughs> on the side there, so uh, she, perhaps she's responsible. Yes, and, um, and a really uh, uh, solid look at this, you know, because I think this is probably going to be very popular within cosplay communities. Yes, um, whenever we can do those live cons uh, live, live again. Cons again. But uh, uh, this is a fun one. Something that you know, is almost a uh, wearable fashion now in the times of the pandemic. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, you, you know, I mean, have I... a holster full of hand sanitizer. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, the boots with the with the dirt and the scuff mm -hmm. on them that uh, th these are not new. She Hyper didn't, she didn't just, yeah, yeah, she just didn't get these uh, recently. And then the base has a nice big solid uh, quality to it, uh, lifting it up. Uh, like that, and giving that that rough, broken planet. Yeah, I'm getting some sort of kind uh, of a dust, dusty look. Some, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah we see the, maybe not the, uh, sand, but it is yeah, definitely the, the, something uh, a little more. The uh, cracks and the dryness mm -hmm. uh, that are there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. This is really, really exciting. I have a feeling that uh, this is going to be in a lot of people's homes very well, quickly. Well, let's let's uh, pop over here to the three zero uh, oh, podium yes. because uh, I actually uh, I actually have not looked at much of what's going on here and also don't know a lot about uh, a couple of these characters. And so maybe you can fill us in a little bit. Well, uh, one, of, one of my favorite is the Night King. Um, three zero has done a really, really good job with their Game of Thrones. Uh, and there are uh, he is he is out and that there are new ones uh, coming as well. If you look at the fabric that's on this, yes, the the miniature folds that are all done mm -hmm. in there. That's the other neat part about this particular convention. I get to point out like this. There's no plexiglass yeah, yeah, you can uh, at this point here, there, but being, yeah. the ability to be able to point out, you see those little dots of white, the snow that's just, mm -hmm. uh, just started to stick. Lightly falling. Yeah, yeah. the uh, grate that I'll call it, that is his shoulder armor, uh, the veining and cracked up around the crown uh, of the head there. Um, his uh, sickle that he has on his, uh, that we have uh, slung over his shoulder here that you have the, the real little leather bits that are there. And even those have a hint of that white in them to almost be that cold. If you've ever mm -hmm. seen you know, when the leather jacket gets a little cold and there's you know uh, that on there. The ice scepter, again, uh, a translucent uh, quality to it which is wonderful. The bumblebee, this is now done in a larger scale. We've seen them in the, a smaller scale. This is their premium scale. So this is whoosh, uh, lifted up. Um, this is where he has his larger cannon for his right arm. 
and then has, uh, I call this war face, uh, which has more of the insect look. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, a little bit more battle ready, right? Yeah, that, it, that he has, but he still has that playful quality, the, the hand on the hip, um, <laughs> you know, there's a- He's there's posing a, for yeah, the cameras. There's bit, yeah, there's a bit of posing. There's a, you know, but uh, we always thought of Bumblebee as being youthful, uh, and this that, and the other, and maybe this is the uh, the slightly awkward kid who's not sure how to pose for the camera. Um, uh, but uh, or very but, you know happy with with himself. Yeah, but, about but the job having he's it doing. having a really good uh, time with it, and and three zero has just done some really really great stuff. Um, you know, you look at the bumblebee, and you have the oil and the dirt and the grime and and such. But you also look at how they can do metal on these two figures, where you have that brighter quality or here where you get just that hint mm -hmm. of of pitting and rust how great they've done on the leather of the glove where you see the stitching uh down on it they've done the rooted hair that flows off the back you've got the cloth on the front and then when they do their capes i always appreciate a good wire uh, yes. in there I think uh, to allow like, to people like the wire yeah. yeah it allows you to get some uh movement and and you know uh more more life to when you do your poses. And this one here is done as a twin pack. Um, I love anytime you get your companion piece. Um, well, yeah, it's good for them to have friends. You know? Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> friends, is, friends, friends are important. Uh, and this one here, I happen to like the hairstyle. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just one I can That's emulate. Classic, so when you talk about guy. cosplaying, I guess <laughs> if I get a cape and a yellow suit, I'm pretty close there. Um, so maybe at another convention, uh, on the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll dress that way. I can't wait until we're revealing the Guy Clender six scale here <laughs> on, on the con floor sometime. <laughs> on, the con, on the con floor. We're working on that currently with the artists. But, uh, these are, uh, these are another just absolutely fantastic, uh, pieces that they do as well. Well, cool. And, and then, um, let's take another peek at, uh, another one of our, you know, some newer pieces yes. and, and our Deja Thoris <laughs> yes. premium format, because this is, uh, this this is going to be a very popular piece for sure. This one here, it, it's, it's the different textures and the different, this is all done with paint and it's a solid sculpture. There's no soft works in it. And yet here, the paintwork just on the armrest mm -hmm. looks like real leather. As a person who just purchased a leather couch, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Congrats. Um, uh, and, 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 but it has that. It has that, that warmth and richness of real leather there. And again, Deja Thoris, if you guys don't know, uh, this is a character from uh, uh, John Carter of Mars. And yes. So, uh, yeah, not affiliated with the movie. This is more... This is yes. more from the, uh, the original text. Yes. Uh, then you get all of what they've done is the, the, what would have been the beadwork and stitching that goes into the different pillows. The softness here, and again, that kind of leather quality, that sheen that would have been in the gold of the fabric. Yeah, the, the, the silk and the leather. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's really, um, again, just a round of applause for, for the, the artistry of the paint, yeah. um, as well as the sculpt. Well, uh, look at the miniature chains mm -hmm. that are on there. Yeah. Um, that's... You know, to do so, again, to do something that such, small. Such tiny it, work, exactly. You know, the and, hair is great too. And then also uh, looking at uh, some of these artist pieces. Yes. Uh, we saw earlier, of course, we started the show. We started with Chris with, Sanders uh, uh, and, and another piece of with his. With the Island uh, Girl. Right, but now we have Pumpkin Witch. Boom, yeah, exactly, Pumpkin Witch. Um, which again has that, uh, his, his style of artwork. Uh, and it is neat to see him come in and work with the artists uh, to take his designs and, and thoughts and imagination into a 3D. Um, and it does, again, evoke his movies. I mean, if you were to say, oh, this, this same yes. Uh, yes. artist Yeah, the kind of playful, uh, the, the playful face uh, and quality on the cat going for the mouse is something we've, uh, we've seen from another one of his uh, characters that had that playful quality. Exactly, yes. Um, oh, it's a little, it's a little stitchy. It's, it's a little. Stitch it's a, it's a little, a little stitchy. Yeah. Um, I, I happen to like the uh, leggings. I was going to say nylons, but the, yeah, the leggings. Those are the leggings. Yeah, uh, the the printed, leggings. Printing, printed leggings. Um, Gets is, me in the spirit for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We, we should find something like that for you and I. 
just, uh, for the just, next for the next just so, uh, yeah just so we can maybe we can, maybe a spooktacular uh show it's going to be a warm halloween here in <laughs> california can, anyway so maybe find <laughs> something like that uh, I, I i like i like the eyes on it I, the the oversized eyes on these uh bring a playful youthful quality Exactly. Uh, to them, and I really think. And b safe. before we leave this booth, can we get a close up of Deja's face? Uh, that's actually just so we get a really good look at that. We've been having a request um, to just get a better look at her. Um, yeah, there is there is a a stern quality about her when you see that. Um, the kind of it's not she really. Is a a she is a Martian. Yep. So it's not really a glare. Um, but whoever she's dealing with has they, a, a, a few more moments to yes. do their, to make their point uh, <laughs> is what you see in those eyes. Uh, you know, she is, she has a very unique uh, handgun there. She does, uh, it's, so, yes, it's a, it's a Martian handgun. Yeah. Um, does not shoot bullets, I don't believe. Probably I not, shooting probably not. Else. And again, when we talked about the texture and the work of the paint, here into the a lamp there, yeah. Uh, into the uh, well, I is this a lamp or, or is it more? Uh, you know, it looks like a ha handle. I think this is a a wine or water picture, mm -hmm. a beverage dispenser, of sorts, um, but done in that stone quality. Another really, really neat. There's a lot of wonderful textures uh, and paint uh, going on in both the sculpt uh, and paint application here. Uh, this pillow over by her foot. Uh, having those deep lines of uh, probably what would have been stitch work on an actual uh, pillow in that iridescent. And we'll also take a, a, a look here at the Devil Girl yeah. statue, uh, which is, you know, that great blend of the 2D animation with the 3D um, and uh, some some great work on the translucent fire behind her. Yeah. The, I, these cartoonish skulls. It's, it's yeah, a very I, fun I piece. Yeah, I really like that that translucent uh, quality, depending on uh, where you display this and how you um, light this. And what's fun is how they've uh, done the shadows in the paint. Yeah. Okay. And there are those, those kind of harsh line that you think is the shadow of the way the light is hitting, and that's actually done in the uh, paint itself. Right, exactly. Yeah, which is a, a really... Lot, a lot of the shading is just done <laughs> because, you know, you, you aren't always able to light your figures on the shelf uh, the way that you think. Yeah, so the, exactly. the artists kind of do the work for yep. you. Yep, and yeah, the fact that it's been done for you, um, you know, is is neat. Uh, the tail, how it wraps and moves all the way around and then comes upward uh, is another neat, neat aspect. That's a classic it? devil right for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it just the, uh, the subtlety of movement in the tail. Well, uh, I think we're going to wrap up this portion with a few of the Justice League here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I do want to just, again, remind everybody that we're going to be back after a little video break. Uh, we're actually showing you a brand new bonus episode of Strike a Pose that was shot in January. So that is why there are no masks. Um, so we will be showing you that uh, in just a moment. But after that, me and Guy will be back to answer any questions, give you closer looks, second looks, new looks at anything you've seen here in the booth. And again, a reminder, if, if you are interested in, in purchasing any of this stuff, go to side.show slash con and you can find everything we've been talking about uh, here at Sideshow New York Con. So uh, before we go, though, these three... You know, some of my favorites. I was a, I was a sprinter in high school, so I oh, okay. So you love this flash. This is one of mine that on on unsealed and revealed when we do our show. One of our favorite things to do is what we call the tread watch, and that's to show them the bottom of the shoes. And the fact he has, see those ridges for the traction. But again, what I like on the shoes, and he's getting a great side shot here, is that you can attach the lightning bolt yes. effect to that. So they have two that, one that goes over each of the arm, but the other two that'll attach onto the feet. Now, the, right now, uh, these are in the uh, pre-posed up on the toe, mm -hmm. uh, but he also does have more of a flat um, foot base as well. Uh, great, great smirk of confidence. I mean, when you're that quick. When you're that quick, It's, it's yeah. hard to, uh, yeah. It's hard, yeah. To, uh, hard it, to outsmart <laughs> such a quick guy. And, and it is great. They have these, these uh, uh, you know, sewn, and and fitted clothes for yeah. all three of them always a fun element uh, yes. to any of these figures and and with these ones here with all three having that ability um 
you have so much more posability that you're not hindered right. um, by the outfits. And that's something that the, uh, the uh, cut and sew department has done a great job with these ones on for that. And so, yeah, same thing going for Superman. Yep, yep, that classic look with the, the red overwear and, yes. uh, and belt. Uh, I love the little loops the little cloth loops of it. And, and no, I and like no the wiring in this, in this cape in particular, no. but it's just kind of hanging. No, but it, it, it hangs beautifully. Yeah. Uh, that very classic uh, S on the back, uh, the tightness of the way the cape goes on the bit of the wider inside uh, there, and a wonderful leather look uh, for the boots. And this is a, a cut boot. So it allows within the ball joint, you can move that foot however you need and then adjust it around, nice. um, giving you even more play. And Wonder Woman to wrap us up, classic look, classic kind of garb. Yes, on her. yes. Uh, again, with that cut boot, giving you again more of the posability. And this is one of those where uh, you don't see the seams. Uh, this is that new style of body that we're seeing. Oh yeah, that you, you can't. You, you do not see the just, seams. Yes. It has kind of that that outer skin on the it. The realistic kind mm -hmm. of joints looking. Oh, I love uh, that. And then done in the classic uh, style as far as as her costume. Yeah, kind of uh, similar to the original television show. A yes, bit. the yes. original television show. Um, I love the hair and the the sculpt on the hair and the movement of it. Yeah. Um, you know, she did have that long flowing hair, um, and this one over the shoulder like that is. Uh, it's amazing to get small strands like that to pop out. It's the Amazon look. Yeah. Well, we've hung out with some of the Justice League. We are going to hang out with, I don't actually know, maybe it's Joker in this uh, next episode of Strike Might a be. Pose. Uh, but it's a bonus episode. We're tossed to you right now of Strike a Pose. Again, this was filmed in January. So that's why nobody's wearing masks like we are and being careful. That was before all of this was going on. And also... We will have new episodes of Strike a Pose for you by the end of 2020 and that were filmed, you know, social distanced, uh, partly at home, I believe. And yeah, they've so, been modified. Yes. So the modified version of the show is coming at you soon. But uh, without further ado, some more Strike a Pose. And then we'll be back here in the con for one last bid adieu here with Guy Clender. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Strike a Pose, the web series from Sideshow in which three contestants battle in a six-scale figure posing competition. Each contestant will be given 10 minutes to hit the best pose that they can. When the time's up, they'll all be judged in three separate categories, creativity, composition, and character. The contestant with the best pose wins the figure. All right, let's meet our contestants. First up is Robert. Next to Robert is Amy. And last but not least, Andrew. All right, welcome to the show, everyone. Are you ready to see what figure you're gonna be posing today? Mm -hmm. All right, here it is, eyes up. Oh yeah, it's the Joker six scale figure by side show. You're gonna have so much fun posing this. You ready to begin? Oh, we're ready. Let's go. All right, each of our contestants is now in the possession of a Sideshow Joker six-scale figure and an identical array of accessories. Contestants, are you ready to begin your posing? Yes. Yeah. All right, then in three, two, one, go. Wow, we're really doing this, guys. I'm already horrified, actually. There are enough hands to build a hand mountain, which is not necessarily my plan, just to clarify. Yeah, taking inventory. <laughs> Gotta start where it's important to start. Ripping off the head. The Joker would approve. There we go, there we go. How's it going over there, Robert? Do you have a plan? Kind of. Oh, I love this. Was there something cute about it? Because that's horrifying. <laughs> Seven minutes. No! no! I'm really having to use my muscles today. Yeah. Do you have a plan there, Amy? You know what you're doing? I, I do. Okay. I do. I would love to hear you guys doing a Joker laugh. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That had some that had some creep back in. Well guys, that was great. <laughs> um, that was fantastic. We're trying to win. All right, everybody pause, hands off the figures. This is the part in which we throw you guys a curveball. 
The figure as a whole is great, but it's the two portraits that really take it over the edge from a comic book look to one of absolute horror. This Joker isn't funny, he's terrifying. Think about that when you're deciding how to pose him. This is so much fun. I have to ask, Amy, is this your first time messing with the six scale figure? You know, yes it is. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I usually right. just look at them from afar. Your announcement of having fun was so revelatory, I was like, hmm. All right, everybody pause, hands off the figures. This is the part in the competition in which we throw you guys a curveball. We are gonna ask that you find some way, any way, to incorporate the crowbar into your display. Whether it's in the figure, on the figure, or around the figure. It's gonna be really tough for me. Begin again in three, two, one, go. Just remember what I said, it doesn't have to be in the figure's hands. I did it. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. One minute, people. I can do this. <laughs> I think my pose is kind of coming together. It's getting there. I'm feeling the story. Okay. I feel like I need a countdown. I'm like really stressed about how much time is left. I'm, I'm 15 stressed. seconds. No, it, no, no. <laughs> 10, nine, eight, no, seven, stop it, stop it. Six, You're counting wrong. Five, four, <laughs> You're not three, doing the right. I think I'm two, one. Hands off the figures, we're done. All right, everybody. You overcame some insurmountable nonsense for that one. Hey, Robert. Hey. Welcome to the show, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for having me. Want to talk to us a little bit about what was going through your head? Well, the Joker's famous for his iconic laugh, so I wanted to really incorporate that into the, the pose that he was in, and he has a very over-the-top laugh, so I was thinking he needs to be like leaning back into it a little bit. Yeah, the, the crowbar was kind of a curveball for me. I ended up, uh, I was think originally thinking of going with the gun, but uh, yeah, so I had to kind of rework the pose a little bit. I don't think that the curveball really affected you too much. I'm sure that maybe you would have liked to have gone with the gun, but uh, the posing is fantastic. Fantastic. It's, it's just really, really solid. This is textbook uh, Joker stuff that's going on here. I can tell that you, uh, you've paid attention to the character. Yeah. So uh, I'm really liking what I see here. Thanks. All right, thanks. Hey, Amy. Hi. Hi, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. So, first time with a six scale figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about what was going through your head. What were you trying to achieve here? You know, the Joker is just very out there and crazy, so I wanted him to just kind of be like, yeah. Um. That's why there's a gun in his hand. He's obviously extremely violent. The crowbar really threw me off. Um, okay. Yes, I was trying to figure out how to put it in his hand. I I didn't know oh. how to, so I was like, okay. But what you did, the way that you resolved the issue is perfectly normal. The stand, um, throwing elements down there, the accessories down there, just to add a little bit more presence and scene. Mm -hmm. That's a perfectly acceptable way to add to the display. Yay, yeah. yeah. you make me feel so much better about this, thank you. Sure, for your first time, I think you did an amazing job. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Terry. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, I'm a really big fan. <laughs> no points for sucking up. <laughs> All right, so, your first time with six scale. Yeah, I wasn't awesome. gonna mention it. Awesome, but... yeah, you were quite the overachiever here. I, I tried to. Yeah? Yeah, I was so trying to do my it best. It shows. So, let's talk a little bit about what you got going on. Tell me what was going through your head, what you were trying to achieve. Everything comes down to a good story, okay? And this is mid-torture for me, okay? What? This wow. is a torture scene, and he's been doing everything. You can see on the podium there, he's, <laughs> you know, he's had the gun out to freak people out, which, you know, is, of course, he's got the blanks. He's been throwing the cards around because it's a signature thing. He's got the knife in his mouth just for the terror of it. This crowbar, he couldn't even swing down with that hand with any momentum. It's all about the fear. He's pretty I, maniacal there, I went dude. for as freaky and as, as much movement as I could. Wow, I don't even know what to say. Every line is broken. Um, like you said, plenty of curves, great composition, great character, great stuff. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Creativity. Composition. Composition. Character. The scores have been tallied. The results are in. The winner is... I don't know, it's just weird.
record. Like, we do the best we can with what we have, you know? I can't control what people say about us on the internet, you know? But it's just, we're just a couple of Boston dudes doing our thing. Working hard, by the way. I saw the CrossFit scenes. Excellent, you know? But it's just, you know, what do you do? Direction and everything. And, well, you get it. You know, Argo. Amazing, by the way. And you were the bomb in Phantoms, yo. All right, the scores have been tallied. The results are in. There can be only one. Contestants, are you ready to find out who that is? Yes. Yes. It was very tight. It was by one point. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right, the winner is with a score of 24 points, Andrew. Thanks for watching this episode of Strike a Pose. Be sure to let us know who you thought won in the comments below. From all of us at Sideshow, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Sideshow New York Con is now closed. Please make your way to the nearest exit. And thank you for joining us this year at Sideshow New York Con. Sideshow New York Con is... Seriously? Guy, what's the matter with you? It's over. Get out of here. And hey, there's no running. Only walk in here. Okay, this is it, folks. This is the final look at our Sideshow booth at Sideshow New York Con. Again, I'm your host, Brad Gage. So excited to close this out with you live here at the Sideshow booth and with my good friend, Guy Clender. Guy, it's, I, I love being it. here. Yes. And, and, and this is it. And this is, a fan and this of is it. I, and I think, you know, you and I here in, in, uh, on the coast, post-show, you and I could probably go out <laughs> surfing just like Batman and Joker. Who would you be? This is the question. Who do you connect with more? Oh, um, Adam West or well, Caesar Romero? I have a green pair of shorts, so I should probably do do Joker. Gotcha. Yes, I, I, I definitely... I'm not a big shark fan, so I would take the shark <laughs> So you would have spray. the repellent. Yes. Uh, these, are, these are so fun. There's even a translucency uh, to the wave. So when you're on this side here looking back, you can even see Batman's board or Joker's board through there. You can get the hints of yellow. They've got their, their fun emblems. Um, the tight print uh, and paint job on their shorts. Yeah. Is How spectacular. Else would you know that they're hanging ten if they weren't wearing? If they weren't wearing the shorts, mm -hmm. that's what I like about that. You're like, I weren't sure they were surfing. They were on a board. They were on a wave. But oh, they've got their swimwear. So of course, Batman and the Joker from the classic 1960s TV show. Yeah. One of my brother's favorite things. He he actually recently got me that whole box set. So this is. Oh yes. This is appealing to me. I mean, it's a throwback, but it's also one of those pieces that uh, that brings a little fun to the show. It does bring it does bring fun to the show. Uh, and up here, the this is an incredible, incredible look that I cannot wait to see yeah. uh, how it's brought into the film uh, with the swooping uh, down wings, the lasso of truth, um, an what? incredible look. Wonder Woman 1984. So this is a look at the movie has, has yet to come out. And I know that date, that release date keeps getting shifted. Yeah, it keeps getting um, shifted. But, but it's paired up, I guess, with a cheetah uh, uh, mm -hmm. scale, uh, tenth scale figure as well. Yeah. I really, as, as much as I like this, I've obviously not seen what that is, so there's not the emotion. For the, the Wonder Woman and Young Diana to me is is wonderful. I love seeing this early rendition of her when she was just training uh, with the rest of them, and it's the part and, of the movie and, and the becoming who she would become, and then to see kind of the spin around, and here she is when she says, "This is who I am." Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's it's such a great look. Um, it's the full story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To 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 say a full story or arc of a of a character in a single piece and something like this is really very different. To, it's not a single moment, but like you said, it tells somebody's story. Yeah. Um, and, and I love that. That movie, it was one of those moments that kind of hit me about 10 minutes in. It's like, I've never seen this before. I loved that. It was just this whole city, this 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 island of women fighting, learning, teaching each other. Yes. And, and, and it's a rarity in film and storytelling at all. Yeah. Where it's just women working together uh, uh, without... You know, men getting involved, and it's 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 other the other side of that is so prevalent, and it was just uh, yeah, yeah, that was it's touching the, to me to see that. On yeah, film. yeah, that's exciting, and I and, and I look forward to to learning more about that part of her life, yeah. and 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 that group uh, in uh, in the upcoming one, where I will get to see what in the world we need gold wings for. I know it's. <laughs> I mean, she needs them. That's for sure. It's yeah, just, yeah. What are they for? I, I, I think they're they're a mandatory thing. Yeah. Um, from now on. Yeah. And of course, uh, uh, the nice thing about this Iron Studios podium is that we have three versions of bats and three versions of Joker and uh, and these kind of uh, mini co figures featuring uh, uh, the kind of. Uh, First two depictions of Batman yes. and the Joker in movies and feature films. Yes, yeah, we have the the uh, eighty nine Burton style here, uh, and I love the gargoyle. I love the stone paint uh, and them together. Just a fun uh, look in that neat uh, comical smirk that he had with the raised eyebrows on the Joker. Uh, real fun colors on that. Again, I, the exaggerated eyes are great, and uh, then in uh, Dark Knight where we have the more armored version, much more stern look on Bat's face. Uh, for Joker, we have him with his uh, bank robber mask uh, and his card. Uh, just a fun, these are fun. These are real they're, they're fun. fun. They're cute. They're yeah. still very intense and ominous. Yeah, it's something it's, it's something new. It's something uh, different than than we've seen. And that's that's the fun part. And, and something childlike. I mean, definitely get, giving yeah. them these proportions make make these kind yeah. of this kind of terrifying yeah. you know, and to have this Joker much, into a child uh, yeah. looking to have uh, that figure. that hint of caricaturesque, but in that scale, but then also have that the detail, if you look at the tight detail um, in his dark knight. Uh, outfit and the way in which all of the armor and uh, his gauntlets uh, there and even his, his uh, small uh, batarang uh, there is pretty darn neat. Yeah. And I just, I gotta love the Jack Nicholson face. It's one yes. of my, Jack Nicholson's face in film is one of my favorite faces and to yes. see it, the elements of him depicted in this yeah. uh, um, brings me a lot of joy. The Jack eyebrows, the Jack swagger. Uh, yes. Jack swagger. Yeah. Um, which uh, I wish was my real name. Wish was yeah. <laughs> from now on he's no longer Brad Gage. It is now Jack Swagger. Um, yeah, that is that is a lot of fun. What's what's fun to me is again the um, the detail in that scale mm -hmm. uh, where it does the, oh, yeah. the, the the cape on on eighty nine here uh, really has a leather look mm -hmm. uh, to it. Uh, the fabric on on the pants, the tight little shoelaces on, on uh, Joker and uh, the, the spat style of shoe. And uh, we are actually, I think we can sneak in to see some more DC pieces in a moment, but I wanna talk to you for a second here, Guy, reminisce a little bit before we go over there about, about the con. Okay, this has been a week of yeah. all things Sideshow, bringing you folks uh, the most of the con we can socially distanced. And so I, I guess, you know, what, what do you think was, was your favorite part uh, um, aspect of this year's con? Sometimes the cons can be overwhelming. I mean, sensory and other, and that there can be so much that you, that you lose it. And you go, I don't even, I don't remember seeing that. Somebody goes, oh, I loved such and such. What I've liked about how they've done it this time is that we've been in different areas of the booth and really focused on it. Mm -hmm. And then I go, okay. And then that's, that's enough studying or cramming for, for a time. Yeah. Then, okay, now we're on to the next one. Uh, instead of me trying to gather it all at once and, and, and retain all of it. Right, there's, that's, there's less of a rush. Yeah, yes. that, that's, that's been one of the most enjoyable uh, things to me is just then the ability to, to, rem to remember all of it is to kind of savor those. I'm not, okay, you got about five minutes until people are coming around the booth. No, 
we can sit here and look at this and, and really go in. And then when you talk about, you know, really look at it is the lack of plexiglass. You know, um, one it, positive it nice that's come get, out of this kind of thing is that, close, yeah. is that we don't have that. I could never do this kind of thing before. Um, and that's the neat part is being able to, to get there and to bring the camera in that close to not have to worry about glare and reflection and, and, and things like that. In a um, time, of, in an era of a lot of plexiglass. Yes. We don't have yeah, any we don't have, This is the one the time con. and one place that we're, that we're not having to use it. Yes. Um, and that, that to me has been great. And also to see things across the board. Um, in, in, in scales or in representation to uh, photo reel when Hot Toys does something that looks exactly like the actor to something that has a, a fun and caricature look to it, that, to something new and from the imagination in, in Court of the Dead, um, things like that. I think that's, that's always spectacular. The other one I've liked is all of our behind the scenes. Yes. That is another great Great thing. interviews, fantastic, you know, just looks at... Yes, together to, some of these figures. to figure out how the how the art goes into it, mm -hmm. because, you know, you can look at it and go, wow. But it, it, it's it's like when you how did they do that in a movie? How did they how did they make that happen? How did this happen? Um, and we don't get to see that in this in the world of collectibles and toys too much. And to and to see all of the work that goes into it and how it's done is is mesmerizing. Yeah. And that that to me is what been one of the really fun things that they've added to this one. And I hope it's something that we continue to see uh, moving forward. It's been a very vibrant, uh, uh, yeah. rich experience here. It, it has and, been. And full of uh, uh, more than I even thought I wanted to know. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I will just say uh, real quickly, I've just really appreciated the dioramas that you've seen, uh, Court of the Dead, Mythos, DC, Marvel, all this type of stuff. Uh, uh, when I can walk amongst these maquettes, these premium format figures, and kind of make them a part of my world, uh, uh, you know, that's what's special about collecting. So, yeah. so that's what I've liked. But we have a special treat. We're going to do something we haven't quite yet done at the con, and we're going to sneak through the curtain and take a look at a couple figures that have been uh, uh, frequently asked to take one last look at, and that's uh, Superman and a Batman who may or may not laugh. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, let's sneak through here. It's, it's the last day. We may get thrown out for doing something like yeah. this. Um, but uh, thankfully, we've had a, where, where shall we start? Why don't you stand right there? Uh, I'm going to stand yeah, here. Why don't you stand in between them? Because right. first off, we're going to take a look at that uh, premium format figure you just saw getting made a little wow. bit ago. The Superman Cold to Action. Yes. Uh, this one here is is one of my favorites in the, in the, in the new premium format uh, collection. And what I dig about him is that we, we see a lot of representations uh, of Superman. Mm -hmm. Very rarely we see something of Clark Kent, but to see that, that mid-transformation is really neat. And this is one that I absolutely love. Um, the design uh, that it is, the motion, uh, yeah. that intensity. Right down here, uh, and I hope he gets this, is the splash of the water coming off the shoe. I mean, he's Russian. It's such a, it, it, it is a specific detail, but so neat and so to life and, and really uh, brings it. The, the uh, manhole cover that says Metropolis, I mean, mm. it's cut off a little bit, but to have that there, um, the, the, the fact that you get so much fabric that's done on his suit. I mean, that's a tailored suit right there. Exactly, to tailor something like that. Um, and that the, uh, the, the, the tie sweeping back, again, something done in that scale that looks as though it's a real, uh, real necktie, uh, the the glasses, uh, and this one uh, does have a additional portrait on the exclusive. That's a just a Superman. Portrait, that is the Superman portrait, which is a little further into his transformation. Yeah, but what's fun about this is it, it is that moment, the call to action, and we've all experienced yeah. that moment in our lives where we have to kind of step up to the plate and step up and be our own kind of Superman or, or, or Superwoman. And, and, and I, think, uh, I think that that connects with me a lot. There's that forward momentum of, of an important yes. moment that, um, that's really depicted here. And I, yeah, I get why people want to see this. I love this piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to end it a little bit uh, darker, a little oh, bit definitely creepier, dark. This is. why don't we look at the Batman Who Laughs premium format figure, um, truly, 
uh, uh, pretty dark time for Batman. Yeah, it's 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 a horrifying time. This is <laughs> such a such an interesting look. It really is uh, an interesting alternate uh, style of of uh, universe. Um, first up, just the creation of the base, the stone look, and uh, the the uh, stone kind of carvings of some that have not fared too well. Right. Uh, uh, with him, uh, but then that it's wet, and to see this drip coming down over the great work. Mm -hmm. um, his shoes have a bit of muck on the front of his uh, right and left boot there. So yeah, he's got he's, a lot of wetness, a lot of dangles, yes. a lot of sharp yeah, yeah. pointed edges, although, you know, it's not sharp to you as a collector, but they Correct. look sharp. Yes, exactly. Those are not, um, yeah, that's not going to poke you or anything. The, uh, the, the leather of the boot, uh, that texture, is spectacular again such great work in that that the buckles up on uh the jacket and waistcoat and those that are over on the shoulder uh pauldrons uh there and that is just one of the most maniacal disturbing it is. portraits i've seen i think I, I think that's what people like about it it's it's seeing an unhinged yeah. version of batman yes um you know just that kind of alternative yeah, Jokery Batman, where you're just you don't know what he's gonna do. It's it's it seems like all is lost. It is a, uh, a you know just more gothic. If you yeah. want to get a little more goth, this is what you go with. Yeah, I mean you get that that wetness of the teeth and the inside to see that mm -hmm. deep in the in the mouth and the sculpture. I like that there's the metal being used to uh, to, to depict the ears to, yes. to depict the uh, ears up there around the crown. Um, such an interesting look, and I know that many people this is. Um, one of their favorite interpretations of uh, Batman and, and the story um, and the twisted way that uh, Joker and Batman coexist. It is. A, it's it's a twisted piece. It's yeah. A, it's a heck of a piece. It, 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 it's just a, another testament to the artistry here at Sideshow yeah. uh, that you can expect across the board and at future cons to come. Now that we're wrapping up, though, Guy, we do, we do have a question here. Yeah. Uh, is there something, is there a piece that you're looking forward to doing in Unsealed and Revealed coming up? Oh, uh, a future Unsealed and Revealed. I loved the fact that we uh, showed the Bespin version of the Luke. Um, I'm, uh, I was fortunate enough that we did an Unsealed and Revealed of Boba Fett in the vintage color. Not only was that fun to have that vintage quality, but uh, the packaging mm. for one was fun. And I know that they're continuing that with the 40th anniversary and the Empire stuff. So that's one I want. I, I can't wait to see uh, with the Luke uh, that they're going to do with that. And then all of the stuff from the Clone Wars. Uh, that Darth Maul Clone Wars uh, just is packed yeah. full of stuff uh, from the way in which he's displayed to the other. Uh, and then in the six scale stuff, uh, Gambit. Gambit looks amazing. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the cloth trench coat and the little buckles on that. Um, to the motion of the cards. That's the Sideshow uh, Gambit. Yep, yes. the Sideshow Gambit and the staff. Um, I love what Sideshow does with their, uh, with their comic book ones. I love that it doesn't have to necessarily be a, an actor, this and the other, but it's evocative of uh, the stories in the comics. Yes. Um, and so that is one that I'm really, really excited about to well, see. We're, uh, we're looking see. forward to seeing you yeah. see those. <laughs> Catch all of Guy Clender's show Unsealed and Revealed on our platform. We have a lot of other shows, as you saw. Uh, you know, Strike a Pose, How to Be a Poser, all this stuff. We have loved presenting all of this content to you. Of course, pop culture is our, our culture. We love this whole world, this universe that we're bringing to life. Uh, before we wrap up, though, I got to give a bunch of shout outs, a bunch of thank yous to uh, people involved here, of course, uh, our, our camera people, Michael, Sam, Julian, they've been behind the cam for us. Chris Sanchez, who's our technical wizard. And uh, of course, uh, uh, our producer, Kirsten Cairns. Uh, uh, we, we got Jeff directed behind here. We got a bunch of people who have helped us out, Amy Chase every day. Uh, and so I'm just so happy that we could bring this as the family. Um, that's, been a, that's been a beautiful really, part, is to yeah. really be part of the family. Um, of it yes. and, and, and all of the people that have made it work and the, the joy that everybody had doing it. Yes, it's a lot of work, but everybody was excited to do it yeah. and in a new and in, in a new way. And how can we how can we bring the fan? How can we bring that guest in 
in a way they haven't been before. And it, it, has, it has been a lot of work. Uh, uh, I'll just say, you know, I know our director, Jeff Dean, has been working working around the clock. It has another week of work. There's prep beforehand. There's, there's breakdowns afterwards. There's a lot to do. And uh, I just have to thank you personally because I've had such a fantastic time. Uh, my favorite part of this entire con has just been kind of giddily running around showing off some of my favorite pieces of course i i love the big ones i love the maquettes uh uh, uh and and star wars in particular getting to reveal some of these mandalorian pieces uh has been very exciting for me because uh, i remember how it was exciting to you know talk about star wars uh when i was just getting to know some of these characters and uh uh oh and you know what i am going to show you my favorite real quick okay I have it right over here the Juggernaut maquette. Boom. Now, I, I first was introduced to this Juggernaut maquette when I was doing the unboxing. Uh, 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 and it is, you know, just one of those pieces that is going to attract your eye from across the room. Uh, but there's these pieces of shrapnel. Clearly, he's destroying uh, parts of this room. And uh, again, I think we showed before, but uh, uh, the size of a human fist are his fi uh, fists right there. So That's nuts. Uh, a pretty intense piece. A pretty, pretty intense piece. So it's uh, things like this, moments like this when I get to show off uh, uh, pieces that make these beautiful and, and, and vibrant characters come to life is really what's important to me about hosting stuff like this. So, um, And this diorama, again, if you haven't seen it during this show, but just to get all of these characters together uh, was part of what collecting was at the beginning for me. I was setting all my Star Wars figures up in a row yeah. in the new Republic Senate, you know, whatever I was creating for myself. And so this is a lot of the fun as well. Um, and I, I definitely want to let everybody know uh, a few things here. Um, unsealed and revealed tomorrow is uh, we got two troopers, uh, right? Yeah, we're going to show you two figures tomorrow. Two figures tomorrow. And then also, this is not the end of the con right now. When we are done streaming here, uh, we are still running it for a few more hours. We're actually uh, going to be going until about five o'clock because Sideshow does not end until Paul and Autumn say it does. And that's uh, they're giving away some goodies, uh, some, some surprises in the Facebook group. So definitely stick around until 5 p.m. Pacific for that. And of course, I cannot end this, wrap this up without mentioning our art print gallery, some fantastic pieces we've had this whole week. We've been showing them off, but definitely check them out at side.show slash con. Uh, of course, the Frank Frazetta pieces that are, you know, kind, kind of a, a, a immortalized part of Star Wars history and art, pop art history, uh, 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 you know, beyond that. And, uh, and so that's it, folks. I think I can speak for all of us at Sideshow by saying thank you for being a part of this with us. Uh, uh, thank you for continuing to support these incredible artists and these incredible stories and myths that we continue to, to perpetuate and, and, and you know, live beside. Um, Guy, do you want to come in and say this with yes. me? Yes. Thank you all so much, and don't, don't forget, forget to let your Geek Side Show. show.